I kind of asked myself, what am I doing to make a difference in the world? And I decided I wanted to stop climate change single-handedly. And I knew mangroves were threatened, but I didn't know the extent of the loss that we're seeing. My name is Liza Goldberg. I live in a suburban community close to DC. I'm a junior at Athelton High School. It's an academic and inspiring and passionate environment. Students at Athelton High School are identified as gifted early on in their educational experiences, and that holds true for Liza. She pursues a great deal of knowledge on her own. I grew up reading everything. Eventually, I discovered that the way I wanted to make a difference in the world was through science. When I was in sixth grade, we had a mandatory science project. And she planted six trees in our backyard. And I put open top experimental field warming chambers around them. I was trying to simulate climate change. How she was going about it was pretty highly technical. And she presented it at the Baltimore Science Fair. It's the biggest science fair for high schoolers. In hindsight, that was probably one of the best days of her life. <laughs> I thought maybe I would win an award or something like that. What it turned into was something a lot more than that. Basically what happened was there was this one judge who happened to work at NASA Goddard and he came up to me, I explained my project. And that conversation then led into the internship when she was 14 years old at NASA. When the scientists offered me this amazing opportunity, I could suddenly kind of see where I was going to be in, in 5, 10, 20 years, and that was the jumping off point. That was when all of this started. It started from one conversation with one judge at a science fair. We were first introduced to Liza through an email. This email came from the education office. There was a really excited new high school student that was interested in working with some of the scientists here. I never pictured myself actually getting the chance to work in a professional environment. I was 14. We brought her onto campus and got her to work a little bit, get her kind of familiar with remote sensing, looking at satellite imagery, and just kind of showed her. And every day she still came in. We were excited to see that. We gave her some assignments and she did it in a week and another intern would have spent a month on it. Liza's work ethic is like nothing I've ever seen. My daily schedule is pretty intense and challenging. I begin at four o'clock in the morning when I go to swim practice. Oh! Swimming has always been a constant in my life. I've done it for eight years and so it's all very routine at this point and there's I think a certain comfort in that and yes I sometimes solve codes in my head while I'm swimming but it's the one place where I'm actually able to just be a completely different person. Swimming is difficult, especially now, because of everything else that I'm trying to balance. But I think what has kept me swimming is just the fact that I'm able to let everything go. She then goes to high school. When she's often here before I am. <laughs> I go to school until 12.30. After school, I drive directly to NASA and I spend the rest of my day there. I then return home, eat dinner, do homework, and go to bed. After homework, I end up seeing her at the kitchen table, pulling out her computer and working on maps. I have no free time, but I'm also doing this global research with mangroves, which I think is, is an okay trade-off to make. She came in, she learned about it, she started reading scientific articles. And so we're like, well, we have to give her something, more of her own ideas to start to work on and, and let that grow. And so that's where this idea of Ecomap came out of. Ecomap is the Electronic Coastal Monitoring and Assessment Program. And I made this program to map all past drivers of mangrove loss. Over the past 50 years, we've lost about half of all world mangroves. Mangrove forests in particular are this thin buffer along these coastal regions. Many communities rely on the fisheries that come out of this. They use it for fuel, and these can help stop hurricanes. They help to stabilize the shoreline, particularly with respect to hurricanes and storm surges that are quite frequent down here. My name is Steve Davis and I'm senior ecologist with the Everglades Foundation. Stephen and other colleagues in the Everglades National Park are using Ecomap to diagnose the specific loss drivers in these different regions. The mangrove coast of South Florida is vulnerable to sea level rise and if mangroves can't keep pace then we could potentially lose these areas. This forest, like most down here in South Florida, have seen quite a few storms. 
Protecting and restoring mangroves now is essential. Here we're looking at an image of mangroves in Everglades National Park in Florida, and we're seeing really large diebacks after Hurricane Irma. We really need to start looking at why the mangroves were lost in the first place. And the EcoMaps work allows us to do that. So Liza really created this EcoMap program through Google Earth Engine to really visualize loss on a large scale. In Indonesia, we have these really dramatic um, aquaculture hotspots where it's just very prominent. My research would not be possible without Google Earth Engine because we're able to take advantage of so many different sources of data. She's doing it at a much higher resolution and with a much more dense data set that we haven't had before. We're able to compute these statistics on the 30 meter resolution, which has never been done before. Now with these tools that are available and the kind of work that's being generated from them, especially Liza's being probably the best and most relevant example, I can see that the work that she's been able to produce is going to be applicable and utilized at a global scale. I would like people to see this project as something that's viable and usable. And yes, I'm 16 and I made this program, but yes, I also did use legitimate methods and science to create it. Just because I am 16, it doesn't mean that the science behind the program isn't sound. I had no idea that she was a high school student working at this level. I hope she continues in this field because we need more scientists like her. Seeing some of the work that she's doing at such a young age makes me very hopeful. Saving the world is kind of some of the things that we joke around but in this case is really going toward that. She teaches me, she's taught me since the day she was born and she teaches me every single day. We see her as an amazing scientist that is going to be breaking barriers. So when I think about her in the future, it's tied to that. It's tied to how can she best adapt her tools to helping the world, to giving back. I'm not sure ultimately whether I'll end up in the government, academic, or, or private sectors, but what I do know is I want to continue pursuing this field. I'm really excited to see where this can go.